This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 678 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by EquestrianCollections.com. Hi, Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is from Shauna Koresh. She may be known by many of us as the clicker training rate lady, but she is really the take it out of the textbook and put it in the barn lady. Shauna uses scientifically proven training and teaching methods, removes the science weenie language, and gives horse folks like us amazing tools with which to improve our horse's behavior and performance. Her reward reinforcement training system dramatically accelerates the training process for any breed or discipline by unblocking the horse's natural desire to perform. What results is an incredible bond between human and horse, a partnership based on success. Today's tip is the who, what, where, why, and when of training youngsters. Horses, that is. But first, let's hear from today's sponsor. Cue the music! Hi, Glenn, back with you from the Horse Radio Network. I'm here with Debbie with the Equestrian Collections Product of the Week. This week we're featuring some new exciting breeches that we have in in stock right now for the Plus Size Rider. Equine Couture Plus Size Cool Max Champion Side Zip. These breeches have a year of seat. They have the CF2 bottoms, which is that silky uh, material that helps you get the boot, uh, your leg in the boot nice and smoothly. They, the fabric is 82% nylon, 12% Coolmax, and 6% Lycra, the most comfortable thing you can put on. They're perfect for summer riding. They're perfect for summer shows, and they're in stock right now. We have long and regular sizes all the way from 36 up to 44. So this is just the perfect summer breach, and we can get it to you right away. Just uh, It's about $79. Wow, well, which that's is a terrific great price, price, Debbie. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah, so that's the Equine Couture Cool Max Champion Side Zip. You can also shop in our 1824 store to find these breeches and many other products for the Plus Size Rider. And, of course, that's all at equestriancollections.com. And now on with today's tip. And Shauna Karash is here once again on Target Training Lady, the person who helps me get past the bucket trucks in the neighborhood mm-hmm. safely on board my horse. What are we going to talk about today? Well, I think we're going to continue on the, the young horse theme and, and talk about teaching what to teach a young horse to get him started for, for a lifetime of learning. Cool. Don't teach him to rear. No, no, that's okay. not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what well, should we be teaching the young horse? I mean, we, he's not going to be going riding. He's not going to be getting lunged. What in the world should we be teaching them? You know, and it is, it, it, there is 8 million things to, to teach a baby. And I don't you know have that really, big a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, and I saw this really long number, and I was like, what even is that number? It has so many zeros, but it was a septillion, which is not quite a gazillion, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, so there are... Um, there are just so many things that are foundational learning tools that will help them down the road. And the stronger they are, the better they'll be for a lot of things. Now, like I said, these are going to, these things will serve a practical purpose, but it will also teach them, you know, a lifetime of learning and relationships and, and wanting to, to be engaged in things and looking forward to their time with, with humans. And so, and, and we're talking about using the positive reinforcement, and it makes it one, so they're very interested in you and what you want to do for what you're looking for them to do. And their little minds are just so, you know, so eager and curious that it really kind of works to your advantage. But one of the things I think is one of the fundamental tools that you really should always start with is uh, being able to handle them all over their body. So where you can, you can touch every little inch of them and have them be nice and relaxed. So it's not just touching with their head up going, what are you doing? But you want them just to stand quietly, head dropped. I don't care if you're touching my belly, my sheath, my legs, my ears, whatever it is, my mouth. And those are all good things to get them really solid about so you can touch them anywhere. And that, I mean, you think about it, that's going to go a long way towards 
you know, saddling, mounting, uh, you know, fly, or, uh, uh, worming, veterinary stuff. So it kind of sets them up for a whole lot of things, and, and the farrier as well. So handling their feet, that's another really good thing to do, is getting them used to um, having their, picking their feet up and having them nice and relaxed. Well, pulling kind of mimic what the farrier would do. If they pull their foot out and put it on the stand, you know, have them let them do that and pull their foot back. That's another really good tool. And, and I guess one of the fundamental things, too, that I really tend to start with with the little guys is teaching them to lead. So I like to, you know, when you put on a halter and lead rope on a baby, I mean, what is the first thing they do? They have a tendency to rear, you know. They pull, they resist, it startles them, they don't know what to do. So I use the target and teach them. So the target becomes like the new halter and lead rope. So instead of having pressure, you're teaching them to lead by following. So you're teaching them to lead through positive reinforcement as opposed to pressure. Which is, frankly, a much more natural way for a horse to go anywhere. Yes, it is. (laughs) I mean, and it... And what they start getting, so at first I use the target because it, makes, it makes it very clear what I'm looking for, and it helps set them up for success because I, I do teach them the bridge and the target first, so the clicker and then the target. And then it, you can go where you, you, know, you turn right and the target kind of goes to the right, so they learn that, and they're watching your body at the time, so they pretty much start learning, oh, when she goes that way, the target goes that way, I go that way. You turn to the left, you, talk, you walk faster, you trot, you stop, you back up. And, and then you start fading the target out, and what they pretty much learn to do is heal like a dog. It is so, so simple. Like, I had a little guy, and I had him for a couple weeks, and I took him down to a clinic in a foreign place and took him off of the, the trailer with no halter and lead rope in a place he'd never been, and he just stuck right with me, like, okay, this is what we do, you know, and so mm-hmm. you can totally get that. And then I will put in the halter and lead rope. And instead of letting it turn into something that they fear or resist, I put the halter and lead rope on, and then I just have the target go. And then what I do is put, I give a little tug, so they feel a little pressure, but then put the target. So they feel the pressure, but then it's the target is presented. So they do the right thing, so they start, you start teaching them how to respond to the pressure, but it is not taught through pressure. Does that make sense? They're not responding to the pressure because they discover it releases when they move. They, just, they move to the pressure because... They've got a secondary cue. In other words, I feel pressure, and then immediately after that, I saw my target. Yes. So the pressure is more of a signal as opposed to a training tool. You know, because traditionally, we apply pressure until they give, then we soften. We apply pressure until they give, and then we soften. So as opposed to it being the training tool, we're just conditioning as a signal. This little tug means let's go forward. So, Because I, I want all my horses, as much as I do at Liberty and but I, and, and loose and making choices, but I want them to be able to be handled and ridden by everybody and to know traditional signals. But I want to teach them as a signal as opposed through the pressure and release. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So Okay, good. The, that's going to be, I, I, for somebody who struggles doing this just because I have very poor timing, uh-huh. Um. My horse knows it better than I do. He, tra- <laughs> he trains me. He says, click the thingy, honey. Click the thingy now. Um, when, in the case of teaching them to lead, um, they understand the target. They've got that down pat. We have a halter on. We have a lead rope on. But we're not using any pressure on the lead rope to tell the horse to do anything. It's just hanging there. Yeah. So we put... It, it, go ahead. So we will create slight tension on that lead rope and thus on the halter and thus on the horse's head. And we do that for a very, very short period of time, like a couple of seconds and then present the target. Is that how how that would work? Exactly. So it's just a little, and it's soft, you know, it doesn't have to be the softer we teach it, the softer it can always be. You know, if we give a big giant tug, you That's know, asking it's for always, mischief on a youngster, isn't it? <laughs> it is. And then we also, it is asking for trouble. And then we're also saying this is the criteria. But if we teach really soft and they respond really soft, we'll get soft through everything. And everybody wants a soft horse. Right. And I, I ideally will start not even with the halter and lead rope, but at liberty first, if I will. If your circumstances allow that. You know, sometimes people, it doesn't work that way, but if you're in a place where you can take them and just teach them to follow and walk with you all by themselves, that will make it, uh, even in their stall, if they're, you can put them in a stall, that will help make the lesson clear. Then here comes this new element of this thing on your head, and, mm-hmm. okay, just ignore it. We're just going to follow the target, and then you start applying the pressure. 
so it helps them to always look at it not as a fearful thing or a scary thing, but they know exactly what to do. Uh So I get my halter on. I'm going to be doing some training because I know I'm going to feel some pressure there. And as soon as I do, I'm going to do something and then I'm going to get and they're going to have that same. They're going to associate it with a learning procedure versus, oh, gee, what's scary is going to happen this time. Yeah, and it's something that they they start understanding. I I look forward to this. I like to do this. People bring fun stuff, so, so it is good. <laughs> this begs the question. <laughs> lots, you know, go ahead. I'll, lots I'll of folks. All over you today. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, lots of folks like to teach youngsters silly little behaviors or encourage silly little behaviors. Can you give me an example of? Um, tricks or behaviors that have gone bad and then people and horse pay for it dearly later on when they're youngsters? Yeah, you know, I mean, there's a a lot of things that people let happen. Like they let them nose them or push them or lean on them or come up to them and, and rest their head really heavy on them. And all that can be fine if you initiate it. I mean, I like to hold my horse's head as much as anybody and I want them to lean on my chest, but... I don't want them just doing that at any moment in time, you mm-hmm. know, because next thing you know, they're just running around butting you, you know? And, yeah. and so and you try to, if you can think about what is happening at this cute little adorable stage, well, if it is now a, you know, a, a 1,200 pound stallion, would you still like it? You know, if you can think of it like that or, or doing it to other people that don't know, would that seem appropriate? But there, there's just so many things that people do, you know, or they teach them to shake, and then pretty soon the horse is just pawing and pawing. So there's a lot of things I kind of want the people to stay away from, but it, it, it depends on the personality. But just like I said, if you can think of anything that you wouldn't want a big adult horse doing on their own without you initiating, then don't go there. And like you said, rearing is one that people think that's cute. And you're like, no, I never. I, I haven't taught any of my horses to rear. It would be simple. I could do it in a day. But it's like I don't really want them offering that behavior for me. You know, yeah. I mean, and that, leave, that, leave that to the movie star horses. Yeah, or at least leave it down the road, you know, yeah. where you've taught some other things first, and they go, okay, now there's this. But, yeah, <laughs> as much as you can teach them sensible stuff. And, and another thing, too, like you can every little component of what you're doing you can be teaching, like the putting the halter on. You can teach them to put their nose to poke their nose into the note through the halter, you know, mm-hmm. and that you can reinforce them for that. Well, that kind of thing. So you bring the halter, you present it, they put their head in, you can hook it. And this kind of thing also helps them when it comes time for bridling. So mm-hmm. then you present the bridle, you have the, the, the bit, if you're a bit person, you have the bit to kind of contend with, but they understand the presentation and that something's going to happen here. So there's so much you can teach them. You can teach them to soak their foot in a bucket. You can teach them for the farrier. You can teach Ooh, them. I like that soak their foot in a bucket thing. <gasps> yeah, and it's That's so. Good. I mean, why wait until they're injured and you, you know, they have an abscess the size of you know a, a grapefruit, <laughs> and yeah. you go, no, I need you to soak, and they don't get it. So teach it, you know, now where it's no big deal, and that also tends to carry over to dealing with water and dealing with puddles, you know. So Ooh. it helps them to go, well, that's not that big of a deal. Or there's, you can even put, this is one of the things I would do, is I would get a surcingle, a little tiny surcingle, and I would teach them to have like a saddle pad, just a little mm-hmm. light English saddle pad with a surcingle on them. And that's, that was course, something we did with our weanlings. All of our weanlings had to wear an elastic surcingle uh-huh. and a saddle pad to and from the field every day. And see, and that is perfect because you're just <laughs> preparing them for blankets and for, for saddling and for right. so many things that it is... And it's simple, you know, and mm-hmm. when they're young and you're just setting it up and you can take your time, I mean, there's, there's, you could just go on it. You could teach them to load in a trailer. You could teach them, teach them to be clipped. You could teach them, um, get them, prepare them for shots and what that will be like when the vet comes or every time the vet comes, he just comes in and doesn't do anything, but you're both standing there and touching him. You know, that, that goes a long way. So there's just anything you can really think of that you would do as an adult horse, you can actually – start teaching to a young horse, you know, so even though you may not use it for a long time, you're setting them up so that they do know how to do it. And again, you're circumventing those issues later when you, when you've covered it first in your own due time and you got to slowly process it mm-hmm. and it, it will just help his demeanor about everything. It's really, it's amazing how receptive they are to learning after that. Wow. That, that right there was 12 minutes of intensive youngster learning right there. 
do it. <laughs> that was great, though. There's all kinds of stuff. I, it never occurred to me. Just like, really? Feet in water buckets? Awesome idea. Clipping? Great idea. There. That's just great stuff. And start them early. Get a whole bunch of skill sets under their, under their wing. And by the time they are three years old, they're going to be three-quarters of the way broke mentally. Yeah. They're just going to be little learning sponges. Yeah, and it makes them so sensible. You know, it's a horse that grows up nice and sensible about things, and that's always a, a, a pleasure. Who doesn't want a sensible horse? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you very much once again, Shauna Koresh, from it's, On it's Target a Training. It was a pleasure. That was great. Thanks a bunch. See you next time. Okay, bye. Well, there you go. To listen to all of Shauna's tips, just go to horsetipdaily.com and go to the Experts drop-down menu on the left. You can also ask Shauna questions on her website, askshauna.com. Don't forget to support our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they make these podcasts possible. Today's sponsor has been equestriancollections.com. Visit them today for the world of equestrian shopping choices delivered right to your door. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like to hear us cover on the show. You can subscribe to all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zoom and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zoom, or MP3 player. You can also listen to the shows right on Facebook. The player's right there every day. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.